Hi everyone, my name is Mekha Kadu and I'm working as Senior Software Engineer at CGI. Thank you all for joining today's event. And my talk is all about using Docker as beginner. Let me take you through my journey on how I got introduced to Docker. Also, I would like to talk a little bit about my background, like how I switched my career from a non-IT background to getting a job in IT domain. So let's get started. It all started when I completed my engineering in electronics and communication background. So after my degree, I started searching for jobs. Since the place where I was staying was a very small place and it had less scope for IT industries. Basically, it had more scope for mechanical industries and a little bit about uh, pharmaceutical industries. But anyhow, I managed to grab a job in one of the small scale electronics manufacturing company where I worked in this electronic domain for almost uh, three years. It all started when I was working as testing engineer, where I was testing the specification of various electronic components. Also, I worked little bit in the development area where I worked for the solar light project. And finally, I worked for maintaining the inventory of electronic products, which was a hell lot of work involved in that. And certain point of time, I was getting frustrated because I had to handle a lot of products, maintain the inventory of many electronics components. So I had only two options. Either I need to continue with the same task that I'm doing or take the risk, quit the job and explore different career options. Anyhow, I was not at all happy in whatever I was doing. So I decided that I need to quit the job and uh, explore different career options. So I got enrolled myself in one of the DevOps course. So that was the first time in my life when I got introduced to Docker, one of the famous DevOps tools that helped me to understand the containerization concept. Initially, it was a little bit difficult uh, for me to understand the various Docker concept. But I just want to say that if I, being from a non-IT background, can understand those concepts and try to explore the DevOps world, then anybody can do that. During my course, I got to know what Docker is and how Docker works. But I wanted to know like, why am I using Docker and what are the problems that Docker is trying to solve? Then I started searching in Google about uh, why Docker is so famous and why many companies are actually using Docker. So in any application lifecycle, developer write the code to build their application. And once they are done with their task, they hand it over to the production team or the ops team so that they can work on some other application. But production team on the other hand says that the code is not at all working in their system or in their environment and tells the developer to fix the code and provide us the updated code. Developer on the other hand get frustrated because the code is perfectly working fine in his environment or his laptop. So he tells the production team to check their system because it's working perfectly fine. So in order to solve this problem, Docker came into existence. So what is Docker actually? Docker is nothing but a DevOps tool that helps you to build, ship and run your application with the ease of containerization concept. So during my course, I got to know about uh, various Docker commands like Docker PS, Docker images, Docker pull. But I wanted to know like why are we running this command and how it is actually working. So in order to understand those commands, we need to know the Docker container concept, Docker images, Docker files. So what is Docker container actually? Consider a real life scenario where you want to transport the goods from one location to the another. So what are you going to use for that? We'll make use of containers. Containers are the best way to package your goods from one location and unload it to the other location. And the same concept is being used by Docker. So what are these Docker containers? Docker containers is a way to package your application with all its dependencies and libraries, all packed in a single unit called as Docker containers. These packages are easily shared around and these features of portability Having an isolated environment makes it more efficient. That's why many companies are using Docker. So during my initial uh, course stage, I was told to use uh, VMs, virtualization. 
So then I uh, tried to understand that if we already have VMs, why are we using containers? What makes containers different from VMs? And what is that benefit that containers are providing because of which many companies like many cloud companies are actually using containers. So then I wanted to understand how virtualization actually works. So what is virtualization? So here you can see a laptop that we use in our day to day activity. What is the structure of it? Here we can see that at the bottom we have the hardware, which is uh, CPU and RAM. And on top of that, we have the operating system, which can be Linux, Mac or Windows. And on top of that, we have the virtualization. And finally, the application where we browse or listen to music and many more. Consider a scenario where you are developing an application and the primary requirement is to have Linux operating system. But your system is having Windows operating system. So in such cases, we'll make use of virtualization that helps us to run multiple operating system on a single machine. And how are we going to achieve this virtualization? It is achieved with one of the component that is called as hypervisor. Hypervisor can be considered as a software that creates and runs the VM. And one such example is Oracle VirtualBox. Containers doesn't make use of hypervisor, which makes them to deliver a better performance so let's see what are the benefits of containers over VMs. One of the benefits of containers is that it takes less boot up time compared to VMs. The other benefit is that containers are light in weight and uses less resources compared to VM as everything is packed in a single unit. Containers does not require any separate operating system. Instead of that, it makes use of the existing host operating system on which it is already running. As we just saw, the various advantages of containers, which makes it more efficient, better performance, self-contained, lightweight system, and guarantees that the package software will always run regardless of where it is deployed. So now I got to know the concept of Docker containers, like how it works and why are we using Docker containers. But I wanted to create a Docker container of my own. So how would I do it? So then I got to know that if you want to create a Docker container, you need to understand the concept of Docker images and Docker file. So what are these Docker images? Docker images is a text file with a set of pre-written commands usually called as docker file. Docker images are made up of multiple layers which are read-only file system and they are stored in Docker Hub which is also known as a local registry for Docker images. What is docker file? A docker file is a text file that contains the set of instructions on how to build your image. We need to define all the instructions stepwise. It is basically the building block of the docker container. Let us have a look at the Dockerfile instructions that are available. Dockerfile always starts with from instruction. It defines what the base image will be. This instruction helps to pull the base image. Next is the run syntax. It is used to take the commands as an argument and run it in the form of an image. Next we have env syntax. This syntax is used to set the environment variables. And next we have the work directory. It defines the location where the command defined in CMD will be executed. Expose is used to expose the ports and CMD all the actions to run when the container is initiated is described in CMD section. So then later in my course I got introduced to these uh, docker volume commands. So I was a little bit confused, like how volumes are actually related to Docker, how volumes and Docker uh, like go hand in hand and how it works actually. So let's take an example to understand how Docker volumes are actually related to each other. Containers are temporary. What I mean by temporary is that they are moved around a lot. They are shuffled a lot. Today container might be on server A, tomorrow it might be on server B or the application itself might be updated. Docker containers are used to run our application. And when we delete a container, all the data within that container gets deleted. So containers are not really used to store the data. 
in such cases if we want to persist the data even if the container is deleted there comes the use of docker volumes so where does docker volumes come into play actually let us understand the concept of docker volume imagine that you have a pen drive and you have attached it to your personal laptop and you can access your pen drive from your laptop and if you want to copy any content or paste a new content within your pen drive you can do that easily just like it was a part of your laptop but in reality that pen drive is an external volume to your system it is not the part of the laptop so generally what volume means is an external source of data in order to save the data and also to share the data within the containers docker uses the concept of volumes volumes are beneficial for easy to backup migrate and we can share the data between various multiple containers thank you all for uh, attending my talk and um, i am active on linkedin so let's get connected thank you <laughs>